now to our Super Bowl countdown in Las Vegas. With two days to go, it's all about the bright lights and the big parties, but not everything that shines is on the strip. Jamie Ukas is live with a unique look back in time. Hey, Jamie. Good morning. We are at the Neon Museum Las Vegas, where, yes, you go back in time, but you may have seen a lot of these signs on the Strip. Look at how many signs there are. Can you believe it? There are hundreds along here. That's why I wanted to start back here so you could see uh, just how many there are. Back in 1996, when this museum opened, about 20,000 people would come each year. Now, they have more than 200,000 people come a year to see all these signs. And I have to say, it's very impressive in the daylight, but we wanted to check it out at night. Bright lights, big city, it's Vegas, baby. What is it like to be here at the Neon Museum? Oh, um, exciting all the time. Like this one right here. The Neon Museum Las Vegas sits just outside the city's downtown. The Boneyard, as it's affectionately called, consists of 800 signs dating back to the 1930s. David Derry <laughs> came from Colorado well, Springs to see it for a third time. It's just a fascinating place. I remember a lot of these old signs, you know, and it just uh, it brings back a, a, a lot of memories. As more historic casino sites imploded to make way for mega resorts, City leaders wanted to keep the neon signs. The home of Lido di Perry is 67 feet of history. When this was built in the 1960s, it turns out they used a 1930s transformer. It was really one of the first industries that had a reuse of old materials. You can make a piece of neon and it, and it lasts for a very, very long time. The signs, like Moulin Rouge, are also reminders of the area's rich and sometimes complicated past. It was the first um, non-racially segregated hotel in Las Vegas. So when Frank Sinatra realized that he could go and have a beer with Sammy Davis Jr. at the Moulin Rouge, that's what they did after they performed on the strip. They'd make their way over. Along with all that history, tours at the museum include chemistry lessons. If it glows blue, it's argon. If it glows red, it's neon, neon. irrespective of what the glass color is. And for many who visit, it's the perfect setting for a selfie. It's great photo ops. <laughs> and I have to tell you, if you do want to take a selfie uh, here at the Neon Museum Las Vegas, you might want to come get one of their tours that's kind of as sun is setting because it is really nice during the daylight and you get some good pictures, but the night signs themselves are really, really cool. I did want to show you in the boneyard here, this is the oldest operational sign. It is from 1940. Wow. So a lot of the signs within the boneyard uh, can be restored. A lot of them do. Uh, the restoration is reusing materials and that type of thing. I also wanted to point out this section because uh, the, this is the most recent display here at the boneyard from the palms. And what they've done is they've now gone back, and you can see uh, just to the right of the palm sign, they're now celebrating the indigenous community uh, that was once here in Las Vegas and trying to celebrate uh, some of the people that were here. So there's so much history, so much to learn. There's so many little fun facts. It's a great family destination. And we're just a few minutes from downtown Las Vegas, so it's easy to get to as well. Okay, so much nostalgia there, Jamie. Thank you. Time right